Dr. Brian Voynich from the American Animal Hospital in Randolph, and thanks for joining us for another edition of the Pet Stop, only on News 12 New Jersey. Well, on the program today, we have the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue. Uh, that's a fantastic, dedicated group that's uh, willing to help all Great Danes in need of a home. We also have D. Romaho. Uh, with a beautiful cat up for adoption later in the program. But first up today, uh, a very special person, Dr. Renee Alsaraf. She's been on the program before. She's a veterinary oncologist in West Caldwell, and she's going to give us some new information on radiation therapy. It's great to see you again, Dr. Nice Alsaraf. Nice to see you. Well, you've had a new addition since you've been on the program last. Yes. Tell us about that addition. <laughs> the uh, radiation facility. Not only that, but the your baby. baby. <laughs> <laughs> it was a hard You're two year. Your babies are. They? I don't know which one's more difficult. It is. Uh, I have a 15 month old son who's uh -huh. just been a lot of fun. It's a bit of a juggle, but yeah. it's. Well, it's we've been missed you and welcome back on the program. Thank you very much. So, you specialize on veterinary oncology, nothing yes. but uh, cancer patients, and you do a great job of it. Uh, how did you get interested in that? Um, my father is a human oncologist, hmm. and I think that probably had something to do with it. Wow. Yeah. Where? Uh, in Detroit. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so you had, you've known the lingo since you were... Uh, I have. He used to take me to the hospital when I was just yay big, wow. and I would help out in the office and, and do things like that, and I just think I had an affinity for it. And, and, a, com and a passion and a compassion yes. for the patients. Yeah. That's it's, excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Well, um, from there, you graduated veterinary school and then went on to do an internship and an Correct. extern and re residency? Yes, and that was done at the Animal Medical Center in New York City. Right. Um, I stayed on, actually, after the oncology residency for a little bit to do radiation training. Uh, from there, I went to private practice in Kansas, and I did uh, referral practice for oncology, and I did radiation at the University of Kansas. Hmm. And for the past six years, I've been out in New Jersey uh, doing medical oncology. That's great. Yeah. And um, you see quite a variety of cases, mostly dogs and cats? Yes. Any other species involved? Um, occasionally a ferret. Uh-huh. Uh, one time, a 130-pound snake. Which wow. It was scary. What did the snake have? Uh, he had a sarcoma, mm. uh, a muscle tumor. Interesting. So, yeah. And now you could do something about that uh, sarcoma with that snake. Exactly. Tell us this exciting new development. Uh, you're actually going to be opened up uh, sometime within a month, I guess. Correct. Uh, in Clifton? Yes. Tell and us it, about that facility and what you can do. It is a freestanding building mm -hmm. for veterinary patients that has MRI, CAT scan, and radiation therapy, mm. a linear accelerator. Wow. It's one of the first of its kind in the country. That's exciting. Uh, it is really neat. Yeah. yeah. So that's, uh, that, uh, that snake could have been helped because it had a sarcoma, but tell us exactly. the different types of tumors that you can treat with, uh, with radiation um, successfully. The most common uh, skin tumor that we see in dogs is called a mast cell tumor, mm. and those frequently can respond nicely to radiation. Many can actually be cured with radiation therapy, so we'll see a lot of those on dogs. Okay. We can do that. Um, soft tissue sarcomas, which as you know would be muscle type tumors mm -hmm. um, in the legs uh, or on the trunk, right. um, respond nicely. Dogs and cats that get nasal tumors, oral tumors, or brain tumors also right. would respond. So um, the first line there is if, uh, if, if any of the viewers see a lump or a bump on their dog or cat, uh, get them to their veterinarian right away. They should Absolutely. be checked. And a fine needle aspirate would be appropriate, would you say? Absolutely. Tell yes. us what a fine needle aspirate is. What that is is basically putting a needle into the center of that mass or that lump. Mm -hmm. uh, the veterinarian would then, in a sense, suck out some cells with the syringe, mm -hmm. put it on some slides, send it off to the laboratory, and then the pathologist would read and, and, and give a good idea of what what's actually going on right, in that mass. Right, and we, we, we do probably at least a few to several a day. Um, there's a lot of uh, cancers and lumps and bumps emerging, but some yes. of them are totally benign and some right. of them are pretty dangerous. Right. So you should, early detection is important. Exactly. You always want to know about it sooner rather than later. And yeah. if it's something benign, then that's not a problem. You know, that's more of a cosmetic issue. Now, some people might have a concern, and I've heard it asked before hundreds of times, you know, Doc, when you put that needle in there, are mm -hmm. you spreading the cancer around? For the skin tumors, that's you don't do that. Okay. For certain tumors, such as bladder tumors, that can actually okay, help so you're talking about that. ultrasound guided going way into the ab exactly. uh, abdomen, into the urinary bladder and taking some cells there. Exactly. Yeah. But for most of the tumors, that's not the case. And it's much better to know what you're dealing with than to not know. Absolutely. 
Good. Because if it's a lipoma, for example, a benign fatty tumor, although they can get the size of a cantaloupe in some mm -hmm. cases uh, and, and really have to be removed, they, they still are of the benign nature, whereas other ones can metastasize. And where they usually exactly. spread? Exactly. Um, most will either spread to the lymph nodes mm -hmm. or to the lungs. Okay. So any lumps or bumps in the neck area, behind yes. the, uh, the knees and so forth, would be a consideration to, to see exactly. your veterinarian. Okay. Now we have an image that we're going to pop up there that's very interesting. It's a case uh, of a cat. And why don't you tell us about that? He doesn't have a nose, actually, okay. in this uh, photo with the yep. Elizabethan color. This is Frisky. She is a 10-year-old domestic short hair, and she went out into the sun and outdoors a lot. Mm -hmm. And she actually had a solar-induced or a sun-induced cancer that ate away her nose. It's wow. a squamous cell carcinoma. One of the most common in cats, huh? Exactly. Lots mm. of people also get them. Right. Um, we treated her with radiation therapy. Okay. Okay. She had a 95% chance of being cured, and three months after her therapy, um, she came back to us. Um, her nose had healed up. Okay. And um, as you and can there she is, yeah. And uh, this is a little while later after the radiation therapy, and she's got a nose back. Exactly. And one of the side effects that we see with radiation is it can cause a hypopigmentation or a whitening of okay. the fur. Okay. Okay. So that's why one side of her face yeah. looks white as mm -hmm. opposed to the rest is black. And that's Dr. Michael Brown, isn't it? That is. <laughs> that's the father. That's my in, husband. In his resident <laughs> yep. uh, years. About okay. 12 years and ago. And there you are. Uh, in, in, during your residency, is this? Yes. Okay. Now. Uh, this this shows uh, an example of radiation therapy in a cat. The cat has to be anesthetized. Can yes. Go over that. Yeah. You know, um, they have to be absolutely still. They have to be absolutely still. Mm -hmm. With dogs, we can usually just do some sedation. Mm -hmm. um, cats often need a little bit more just because they're not as trainable in a sense as a dog would to lay okay. um, And radiation is a local treatment. Mm -hmm. So from the the machine up above, the radiation would come out and target one specific area. And yeah. For very this, specific. Huh? Yes. Amazing how the uh, technology has evolved. It is. So we can get within how much uh, space? Uh, a millimeter or two? Or? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it causes very little, if any, damage to the uh, to the other normal cells surrounding the tumor? Not too much. About 50% mm. of dogs and cats can get a radiation burn, mm -hmm. which would be just as if you or I went out into the sun and had a sunburn. Mm -hmm. um, that happens usually during the middle to the end of treatment, and once the therapy is finished, the burn heals nicely, just like it would if, if we had a sunburn mm -hmm. within a few weeks. Interesting. So you have an interesting place where you work at. You've got yourself on uh -huh. oncology, you've got uh, Dr. Ringel with ophthalmology, yes. you've got Dr. Hunt with surgery, you've uh -huh. got Dr. Justin Strauss with internal medicine yeah and you've got around the clock care for those emergencies at night yes it's a great group a lot of lot to see there huh yes all right well thanks thanks so much for having Thank us on we have a phone much. number posted up there too but this is referral only so folks out there should have their veterinarian call if they have one second or uh, second opinions on their cancer cases on their dogs and cats well folks still to come up today on the pet stop we have a lot of dogs on this show over the years but nothing like our next guest you'll be amazed to see this guy we'll meet two volunteers from the mid-atlantic great dane rescue and one of their spokes dogs right after this break. Stay with us. on the Pet Stop, and I'm your host, Dr. Brian Voynick. You know, Great Danes uh, are fantastic dogs. We have the Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue uh, Group here uh, with this big, handsome fella, and we've got Eva and Lori with us. Thanks for coming on. It's a Thanks pleasure. Thanks for having us here. Okay, well, Thanks. tell us about this handsome fella. Well, this, this is Dante's, huh? This is Dante's. Uh, a little five-year-old oh. pooch. Yes. Okay. And you, what you got? What got you into this uh, Great Dane frenzy in the first place? I have always loved the breed, and yeah, I've had great. great Danes for the last 25 years, mm -hmm. and been involved on and off with rescue for all that time. How about you, Larry? Well, I got involved about a year ago. Uh -huh. I have a four-year-old Great Dane, and while surfing the web, found out about the Great Dane Rescue and got involved that way. They're great dogs, um, but unfortunately, there has been almost uh, somewhat of a frenzy because of Scooby-Doo. 
and yeah, that yeah. you know that can do bad things for Great Danes like uh, 101 Dalmatians did terrible things for Dalmatians you having hundreds and thousands of them euthanized throughout the country because people ran out and got one That's and right. you should do it intelligently not uh, not ignorantly tell us give us some advice on uh, what uh, kind of situation what household uh, would be suitable for a Great Dane well I think one of the most important things is the uh, folks have to have a fenced yard mm -hmm. they need to have a place to run and play and exercise that's uh, secure and safe. Right. They need to have a Dane friendly environment in the house. Uh, not a lot of um, breakables, mm -hmm. uh, keeping in mind the size and the tail and whatnot. Yeah. And um, they pretty much need Tail's to. Tail's quite uh, a weapon, isn't it? <laughs> it really is. It really is. He was whacking me a few times before we came on camera. <laughs> That's right. Uh, total, totally innocently, but uh, but boy, he's big. And in, and in the front lobby area, he was just reaching over the desk, checking out the computer keyboard. Yes. So um, what a reach. But um, what made you fell in love with this uh, uh, with this breed? I just have always thought they are just so magnificent and noble and uh, really just puppies in big bodies. Uh-huh, they are. Yeah. yeah. Silly, silly, silly gooses. They're, they're wonderful, what loving, weigh? affectionate. He's about 175 pounds. Wow. Okay. So just like a person. Yes. And you were saying that he can, uh, he can stand and, and reach uh, your husband's, uh, be eye level with your husband who's six feet four with his paws on his shoulder. Yes. So he's a, he's a big guy. He's a big guy. Um, why do people give up uh, the greyhounds that you're looking, you know, you're looking for homes for? You have as much as 75 to 100 at a time, you say? Absolutely. We have about that now. Yeah. Um, a lot of people are going out and buying cute little puppies mm -hmm. that they've seen in the Scooby-Doo movie. Yeah. And all of a sudden, those five or six month old puppies are 100 pound dogs and uh, they haven't taken them to obedience and mm -hmm. they're a little bit out of hand and they just don't know quite what to do with them. Yeah. They also find they're a big financial responsibility and they're a big time commitment. Tell us about that, Lori. What are, what are the financial uh, considerations with having a great team? Well, generally they do need a, a premium type food mm -hmm. uh, because they're a larger dog. There are also larger medical expenses yeah. that can be occurred as well. Right. You know, it's interesting. You know, you, you have a 17 pound, uh, you know, small breed dog that comes in and needs medications. You have a 175 pound dog that comes in and needs 10 times the dosages and uh, exactly. frequently that's 10 times the expense which is incredible you know you can uh, a family can uh, probably more easily handle three small breed dogs than one large breed and I don't that's think that's really commonly thought of but uh, what are the rewards you get lots of love uh -huh. <laughs> love kisses affection a dog that wants to be with you pretty much all the time right they're really a part of the family now, um, if, if people are looking for a Great Dane, uh, you know, what, what uh, attributes do you look for in that family? They, they have to have a fenced-in yard. What about children considerations? They can have children. He wants to answer this one. Yes, he does. <laughs> Go ahead and take that one, Dante. Children are absolutely fine. They are wonderful dogs with mm -hmm. children. We just look for a family, though, where the children can understand that they need to respect the dog right. and um, treat it properly. You know, we... Um, I guess the only issues we've run into are toddlers that really don't understand. They can't jump on the dogs mm -hmm. and, and pull things out of their mouths, pull on their ears, etc. Sure, sure. And how do you test these dogs that are eligible for uh, adoption for, with your program? Well, all our dogs go into foster homes before they're adopted oh, out. Smart. So a dog that would be adopted by a home with children will have lived in a foster home with mm -hmm. children. This is much like, uh, I guess, 4-H families taking in seeing eye puppies before they're uh, released to the seeing eye. Yes. It's a potentially heart-wrenching experience. You get really attached to these guys. Well, we have a very high percentage of what we call foster failures. Okay, <laughs> they stay where they are. Foster families, they can't give them up. And I get an awful lot of tearful calls when the fosters leave. Oh, I bet. I heard that one fat foster family has 11 Great Danes. Is that true yes yes <laughs> a family down in virginia that will not turn away a dane wow that's amazing okay. you know what are some of the common medical issues that uh, great dane owners potential great dane owners should uh, realize well i think the biggest um problem that we see with them is bloat yeah where the uh stomach can fill with gas yes. and actually twist and cut off the blood supply that's right and we it had that topic fatal. on recently that's a, it's a good thing you brought that up with dr um Wendy Ross, uh, because this can be surgically corrected, but it is a medical emergency. Tell us some of the symptoms that you'll find with that. Well, initially, uh, your dog will be very restless and yep. uh, pacing, not able to lie down, get comfortable, 
um, you'll see the stomach start to swell and get hard. Absolutely uh, right. And then sometimes they'll, drooling, they'll try trailing. to vomit, but they won't be able to sometimes because the esophagus, the food tube, will be twisted right. along the axis of that stomach. So that, you're absolutely right. That can be a huge, uh, huge problem. And they, they have to see their veterinarian immediately. They have to go to an emergency facility if yes. it's, uh, during the evening hours because if these dogs aren't operated on within um, a matter of hours, uh, then it's typically a fatal situation. Right. So that's a good point. Some of the tips, um, what do you tell potential owners as far as tips, as far as preventing bloat? Well, we tell them that they need to give them both their food and water from raised feeders. Mm -hmm. We always suggest uh, digestive enzymes and mm -hmm. probiotics along with the food. Right. They need to be kept quiet for an hour before, uh, at least two hours hour, or afterwards, no strenuous mm -hmm. exercise. Mm -hmm. We tell them um, don't let them gulp water when they're hot. We suggest right. ice cubes or chips instead until they cool off. Right. That's and a good idea. Um, many of us have the uh, surgery done. Uh, preventatively, we have their stomachs stacked. Yeah, and, and that's done. You know, we, we did a couple of those recently on Great Danes that came in for on um, hysterectomy. They were spayed at six six months of age, and we tacked down their stomach at the same time, which is uh, a very good prophylactic procedure to prevent that stomach from twisting on itself. Mm -hmm. um, Lori, tell us um, about uh, some of the other. Potentially, we, we have to be concerned about screening them for heart disease. Is that right? Yes, yeah. that would be true. Yeah, and we talked about that not too long ago with a cardiologist about um, cardiomyopathy. In fact, Dr. Justin Strauss was on talking about that relationship with cats and feline hyperthyroidism recently. But um, they get a dilatative form of cardiomyopathy, which is very obvious on a chest X-ray and, uh, and difficult to treat. So nutrition plays an important role, doesn't it? Yes. yes. Which is how you got involved with Dr. Skank, a good uh, right. <laughs> friend and colleague of mine. And also you're, you're at Red Bank? Uh, yes, Dr. Carl Samarco. Oh, sure, right. sure. Yeah, another cardiologist. He's going to be on in a couple of months, in fact. Ah. Yeah. All right. Um, so do you have anything, uh, any any other pieces of advice uh, to wrap it up as far as um, people who want to take home a guy like this? Well, I'd just like to say that we have about 75 of these wonderful dogs available for adoption. We're also looking for folks that might like to come on board with us and volunteer or foster. Mm. You know, there's a big need for foster homes. I bet you, yeah. And, and you're, you're involving seven or eight states? Along yes, the, we are. The, we cover uh, down through the Carolinas. Hmm. Okay. We cover an eight-state area. All right. Is there a phone number and website we can get you uh, for more information or to be a foster Absolutely. parent? Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. The phone number is 908-904-6648. Our website is www.mid-atlantic-danerescue.com. Great. Okay. Hey. Well, thanks, Eva. Best thank of luck. Thank you so much for having us. Well, you're welcome, thank Lori. You Keep much. up the great thank work. You. And thank you, Dantes. You were a real gentleman up here. Big guy. Taking up a whole stage at one point. <laughs> okay, Good folks. Boy. Now it's time to meet our latest pet of the week. And uh, this pet of the week is a former patient of my first guest, Dr. Renee Alsaraf. This is Jake Thomas, an eight-year-old golden retriever from Montclair, Upper Montclair. And a few years ago, he had cancer. He had a very severe form of mast cell tumor. And Dr. Alsaraf treated him. The good news is he has been cancer-free for about three years now. Well, Jake loves to swim, especially in the uh, ocean down at Long Beach Island, and he also loves to play with his neighborhood kids, and he is a beloved member of the family. Uh, that's Brian, his wife Monica, and beautiful daughter Mackenzie. Well, Monica says he's the best dog you can ever have in the whole wide world. Congratulations, Jake. You're our Pet Stop Pet of the Week, and thanks for showing us how well animals can recover from cancer. If you would like your pet to be Pet of the Week, just send their photos to the Pet of the Week at News 12 New Jersey. Jersey, P.O. Box 6558, Edison, New Jersey, 08837, or email those pictures to thepetstop at news12.com. Well, still to come today, volunteer D. Romaho will join us from the St. Hubert's Animal Welfare Center in North Branch with a beautiful cat in need of a good home. So stick around, the Pet Stop is coming right back. We're back with Dee Romaho, and Dee is a volunteer with St. Hubert's Animal Welfare Center in North Branch, and she has a real cute kitty with her. Good to see you, Dee. How are you, Brian? What have you got here with you? <laughs> this is Vulcan. Vulcan, okay. He's two and a half years old, and mm -hmm. he's really a very good boy. He's very well-mannered, very gentle, very easygoing. He'd be great with kids. Aww. He's just a little upset right now. 
he had wants, a long trip. <laughs> yeah, that's a, it's a tough car ride for some yeah. of these kids. Yeah, he didn't like that too much. But uh, he's beautiful. He uh, is real big gorgeous. framed. He's gorgeous. He's, he's a real big boy. Yeah, about 50% bigger than my kitty at home. <laughs> is he? <laughs> yeah. So um, how, how, what's new? With, you had recently had a Halloween event there at uh, Yes, Humor's. we did. We had Halloween had in the park in mm -hmm. Branchburg, and it was very, very nice. Good. Uh, people come all dressed up with their dogs, uh -huh. and the parents and the children and the dogs are dressed up, and we hand out lots of prizes and awards. Excellent. And it's very, very nice. Good and then fundraiser, of course, too, a, for you, huh? Yes, it is. Good. And then they walk about two miles, yeah. and uh, we usually have a mascot there. It's, it's a very nice event. Walk off that candy. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's great. We had a beautiful thank you letter sent to us from Barbara Rushman, who was on the show recently. Oh. Uh, and they had a great event with the Hounds and Harriers run, and oh, it was that's very right. successful. They raised $5,600 to help out St. Hubert's Animal Welfare Center. And uh, even with the light uh, drizzle and soggy field, they had course records set. Wonderful. So they had a, a terrific time. Smashed by 23 seconds. Repeat winner, uh, David Pan from Washington, D.C., and actually Barbara's dog, uh, Sunshi, ran with Kelly Vaness, who you oh, probably know from St. Hubert's, yes. and uh, she won the first veteran award for dogs 10 and over, which is pretty amazing. Great. And so uh, they were very pleased with, uh, with all the donations. <laughs> Well, we're looking to run, huh? Okay. okay. Well, thanks for joining us again. And Thank keep you, up the Brian. great work at St. Hubert's. Okay. Well, folks, that's a wrap on the Pet Stop. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you the next time. I'm Dr. Brian Voynich. Just remember, a healthy pet is a happy pet. Take care. News 12 New Jersey, as local as local news gets. There's only one person I can work for, me. Hey, if I don't do it, nobody else will. I'm the boss of me. All small business owners have something. To decorate your house could be a real budget bust. If you think bigger is better, take a look. We have beautiful Great Danes on Homeless Tales today, hoping to find that special someone with an extra big heart. Hello, I'm Sandy Levine. Surprised to see Danes in rescue? That's what sometimes happens when people get a pet without doing their homework. Mary Sini is here from Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue to tell us about these great dogs. Hi, Mary. Hi, Sandy. Thank you for having us. You're welcome. This is Buka. Buka came to us because the other dog in the household didn't like her, so her family gave her up to rescue, but she's very sweet and she gets along with the other dogs in my household. She's about four to five years old and she's neutered. Okay, and she would make a great pet for someone who knows how to handle big dogs. Now, believe it or not, Mid-Atlantic has about 70 Danes looking for new homes. The group's volunteers make sure all the dogs they place are spayed or neutered. A special giant thanks to our veterinarian of the week, Dr. Shelley Skeels of Montville Animal Hospital. She'll neuter one dog for free, adopted from Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue. Thanks so much, Dr. Skeels, for your very generous donation. Now, what about Lady? Lady is about 15 months. She came to rescue because uh, she was owned by young adults who didn't have time for her, so they gave her up to rescue, and she also gets along with all the other animals in the household. Very pretty dog. Mary, thank you so much for bringing these wonderful dogs on the show today. Thank you, Sandy. So if you think you have what it takes to give a great dog a loving home, call Mid-Atlantic Great Dane Rescue at 908-904-6648. That's 908-904-6648, or visit the group's website, mid atlantic Date. DaneRescue.com. Thanks for joining us on NJN Public Television. Funding for Homeless Tales is provided by the Geraldine R. Dodge Foundation, the Bernice Barber Foundation, and viewers like you.